Soccer.io opens an opportunity to create real-time event-based communication. It's all about sending and receiving data, then manipulating it to your liking. Let's take a little insight on how Soccer.io works. Here is a client. Phones, computers, and tablets are all examples of clients. They are guests of a networking system. Here is a server. A server handles all incoming connections and interactions from clients. Servers control the networking system. Multiple sockets can connect to one server and interact with each other. A server is required for Socket.io to work, otherwise multiplayer will not work in Hyperpad. This is what it actually looks like. I know it looks crazy, just don't worry about it. We will be constantly sending data that contains our player position, a unique identifier, we will get to that soon, and probably some things like what our character looks like, what our character is holding, etc. <laughs> Let's just keep it simple. Here is a Socket.io example shown on the screen. A simple chatting app created by the developers themselves. When you send a message, that message is sent to everyone, including yourself. In this illustration, you can see that when one client sends a message, the message is sent to all clients, including the sender client. Alright, <laughs> let's go on Safari and go to github.com. Um, this is optional, you can sign in or log in. I'm not going to do that because that's not necessary for this tutorial, so I'm skipping this step. Oh, and uh, here's another side note. This can be done on iPhones, iPads, computers, on any device that can use a browser. I'm just using an iPad right now, running Safari. You can use any device, it doesn't really matter. As long as you can access Hyperpad on your iPad, you're fine. Moving on. Copy and paste this URL found in the description. You can also just type it out. Boom, you should be greeted with this page that says, deploy now when you scroll down. <laughs> okay, I'm done. As you can see, there's this purple button that says deploy to Heroku. We're not going to touch that yet. We're going to scroll up here and go to this file called index.js. This is where all the code is going to be for uh, coding your server, programming your server. Now, we don't need to know this yet. I'm just showing you this so you know what you're working with. Now, all of these functions have their own purpose of listening to an event. And doing something if they event so let's look at one example as you can see so um, if you look at this it says sucker on create and if you look at this other one it says um, I O on so it's different functions uh, these are like completely different so ignore the one above let's just look on sucker dot on uh, because that's where your events are gonna be and if you look at all of these, these are named differently. It's literally the exact same thing, just with different events. Um, it says soccer.on. So if you send an event called move or chat, and whatever you, you put in those events, like whatever data you send with those events, it'll just send it to everyone in the room. So that's what the code is doing. Okay, let's pick a Heroku account. All right, um, you just need to log into Heroku. That's all you have to do. If you don't have an account, just make one. It really doesn't take a lot of time. All right, so yeah, this is one of my servers. I'm going to make another one. Um, so I'm gonna scroll over to here. Yeah. And let's press deploy to Heroku. It'll transfer us to Heroku and this is where you get to deploy your server. And I'm just going to name mine something along with, like, Sakadai.io example. Um, let me think. Okay, Sakadai.io. Oh, crap. Nah. Socket. It has to be lowercase. Oh, God. Uh, I can't use dots. Sakadai.io example. It's already taken. Uh... <laughs> oh, I can't put dots. It's like a oh, is it? <laughs> I'm literally only trying to. Uh, I'm literally just trying to find a name, like a suitable name for this that you guys can use. Uh, what if I put. Maybe I should put my name at the end. 
Yeah, I think I should. Uh, RX codes. That's available. I'm using that then. And then you press this purple button at the bottom that says deploy app. And it should make your server based on what you need and what's in the file. So, boom. That's gonna do all this crazy stuff. You don't need to know about this. Blah, blah, blah. Um, all you're doing is trying to find the URL. That's all we're trying to do right now. So, let's wait for this to load now once this is done it should have two buttons at the bottom like that uh, manage app and view uh, we want to view our app right now our server so we're just going to click that and boom this is what it looks like now when you send something it's not going to actually work you have to connect it with hyperpad for it to actually work so let's um copy this url and go to hyperpad here we are, let's create our own project. Let's call it like Socket.io chat example. Well, it doesn't have to be a chat example. Let's take that out. Done. Create. And there we go. Now I'm gonna make a text that's gonna contain the URL so I don't forget the URL. This is optional. I don't know why I'm doing this. And just putting that there so I can remember what the URL is. No. Of course, everyone's gonna see this and you guys can use this URL. I just cannot guarantee that this is going to be online 24-7 or that the server is available when you're watching this. Alright, I just created a text file and let's dig into the behaviors. This is where you get to have fun. So I'm going to go and get a connect behavior. This is where it's going to connect to the server. Oh, and you have to you have to have a client to connect because how are you going to connect if you have no client? So you have this client behavior. And we're going to paste our URL in. You have an option to secure your URL so that nobody else can see it. Okay, so let's go to this connect to socket behavior. And we're going to put our client in there. This is so your behaviors know what they're doing, what they're connecting to and stuff. So I'm going to grab a timer. Set it to a smaller interval. And let's get the socket status. All I'm doing right now is getting the status of the server, like if it's connected or not, if it's working or something like that. So I'm just going to set the text to be like this. And there we go. Now, I'm just going to like just change the text like that. Let's test it. And boom, it's connected. It connected already. As you can see, if your server is working, it should say connect. I'm going to move this because it's annoying. Um, there we go. Okay, now when we open your project, it's going to connect. Now, I, I cannot guarantee it's going to connect that fast because it usually takes longer than that. Um, so, yeah. All right, let's try to make a chatting app. Uh, I'm going to go back to the behaviors and let's have some sort of event and a way to send an event. And we call that emit to socket. So when you're emitting to the socket, you're sending an event. This is a way you can send stuff to the server and make the server do something. And another side note, uh, on the connected socket behavior, there's a bunch of other options you can choose, like disconnect and connect, reconnect, all of these options. We just don't worry about namespaces right now, we're not using those because it's a little complicated for now. You might learn about those later. Oh, and make sure that uh, your behaviors are using this socket. Because if they don't use the right client, then it's not going to work well. Alright, looking at our code, you can see that there's this chat function right here. And all it does is just send this chat message to everyone else in the room. So, let's go back to here. We're going to send an event called chat. And the value parameter is what we're sending. So, okay, let's make it so we can listen to an event called chat. I'm going to create a text object and maybe shrink it down. I'm going to make this text uh, where you can like see messages. So this is going to be a placeholder for messages. Uh, maybe I can make it big too. Bigger. Yeah. All right. This is where all the messages will be. It's going to show right here. Minecraft style messages. You'll see what I'm talking about when I get this working. So we have our object, text objects, and maybe let's make a chat button. Uh, I'm gonna say chat. Oh, too small. All right, uh, I'm gonna line that right there on the bottom right. Oh, okay. So when you touch this button, it's going to prompt an alert. 
Oh, that's a text bubble. I'll alert. And let's make it not pause the scene. Uh, let's say chat, multi button input, send. All right. This is all it is right now. You can just copy that. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Um, what do we need? Oh, yeah. You meant to socket. You meant to socket. So when I press the send button, it's going to make. Oh, wait. We need an if statement. I forgot. Okay. Button index on the top if it's equal to zero. So all this is doing is that if you press the send button, it's going to send whatever you typed. Make sure you put the right client that you're going to use. We're going to use the chat event and we're going to be sending whatever you typed. And uh, oh God, I message. Uh, I don't feel like editing that out. Like I'm too lazy right now. As you can see, I haven't put much effort into this video. I'm just lazy right now. <laughs> like I'm tired. Okay, let's about go back to here. Okay, we don't need that. We already have that in our other object. So this is our soccer event now this is gonna be weird okay you have to get the array value because whenever you receive a message it comes in an array i know it's weird but it comes in an array we want um the first value or um the value at index of zero which already it already has that for us so we don't need to change anything and okay so that's it that's how you receive data that's pretty much it so um the weird question is what we do with that data i'm gonna make it so uh i'm gonna get this label let's combine what I, whatever we have on our log make a new line shut up imessage and actually i think i want that first and uh okay oh i'm doing okay imessage stop oh my god i'm turning this off i'm turning this off no shut up where are you? Get out. <laughs> yeah, I'm turning that off. Oh my god. Sorry. Anyways, back to the video. All right, so all I'm trying to do is make it so when you receive a message, it's just gonna append that message to this text. That's all I'm trying to do. Um, I think that's it. It's that easy. It takes like just a couple behaviors. Let's test it real quick. All right. There we go. We connected now let's say something hi there we go we received a message that, that says hi we get to type out his random stuff uh, it works it works you see you see that text depending on the left corner it works it works perfectly now the issue is that we don't know who's sending this message so let's make it so uh it asks for a name and then uh, it will use that name in our message. So, all right, I'm gonna make that brighter so it's easier to see. And let's go on into our behaviors. Uh, all right, so at the beginning of the scene, it's gonna have a pop-up alert, which is going to ask us for our name. So I'm gonna use multi-button with input. Uh, I'm gonna remove this um, cause I want to make this like one button enter name all right uh what else do we need the title might as well called enter your name uh all right and then after that it's going to store it in a variable before we do that let's check for the length of our name so let's use a behavior called text length which is going to get the length of our text and let's make it so it's a loop boom uh if statement boom so it's checking if you typed a username that's greater than zero so if you have if you left it blank then it's not gonna work it's just it's just gonna ask you it for again i'm gonna make a variable called username let's use the input field of that variable and plug it in with our name okay oh make sure we start behavior is on for that behavior uh let's combine text so we are going to have our name before 
then after that is going to what maybe give me separate of that and uh after that we can have our message um shown at the end and we're gonna send that all right when it plays uh it should show this prompt so if i don't enter anything it's gonna prompt it up again there i go uh, let's test it out so if i say something like this boom there's my name before it and there's the message after it awesome hello guys this is a soccer.io tutorial amazing right this uh i don't know this blah, 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 blah. <laughs> wow this is amazing and there you go you have your own chatting up right there and wow this is a long video i know um that's because i'm not cutting it or anything or trimming it because i'm lazy right now i don't feel like doing anything all right back to github and as you can see this chat function right here is literally the same thing as everything else in here literally the same exact thing so you can literally just change it to move to shoot to anything um that you see on the screen and yeah if you want to edit or modify the code you would have to clone or download the project uh just click on this button right here and make sure to follow all instructions if you're doing that it's in this file right here in this um whatever you call it it's in this deploy now tab it will show um the instructions right there and all the syntaxes and stuff so yeah